Welcome back to Superbike Speed Fest at Monterey. Beautiful uh, coastal aerial shots here. Roger Hayden, Michael Hill, and Greg Kramer talking you through what will be, I'm sure, Roger, a very exciting Revit Twins Cup, their second race of the weekend. Yeah, second race, and if the race is anything like yesterday, there's going to be a lot of big battles all the way throughout the field. And, you know, that podium went to the, the battle all the way toward the, the very end of that last lap, so I'm excited to see what these guys and ladies with, the, with Kayla, she gets to get back in that race today after her mistake yesterday and see what she can do. Yeah, absolutely. Kelly Yakov, unfortunately, going down. We did speak to her earlier on. She's bounced back. Got a good team around her. And unfortunately, when you do go down, that, that's what you've got to do, haven't you? Just pick yourself back up. Go again. Today's a new race. Yeah, today's a new day. And, uh, you know, she's got, like you said, a lot of really good people around her. And uh, she's going to bounce back really quick. Yeah, we uh, had a fantastic race yesterday around this 2.238 mile circuit. Here are the highlights. Cracking start from the front row of the grid, but it was Blake Davis, the defending champion, who got the whole shot. Yeah, Blake got a great start, but you can see right there early on the race, the two Robo Engineering guys making moves on him pretty quick. And then when they went into the corkscrew, Blake tried to make the pass back. Yeah, we uh, weren't sure if they touched. We saw a different angle. They did touch down through the corkscrew. Everybody stayed on two wheels. And there's that. Re oh, T and me. Great racing. But Roger, Robin is racing. Yeah, and great by both of those guys keeping their heads down and getting back in the race. And from this point on, Rocco was starting to chip away and Gus was coming along with him and it left this big battle from third all the way down to about seventh. Yeah, a new name, the 27 of Filippo Rivelli, almost taken out by Kayla Yakov, who uh, went down at turn five. She hasn't had much luck there by her own admission over the last couple of uh, seasons in different classes. Down into turn two, and then this happened as Rivelli, the Italian star, went down at the corkscrew. Yeah, down at the corkscrew. And while that was going on, you can see right here, Rocco slowly chipping away. And Gus, Gus wasn't too far behind. Gus was matching him for lap times. And uh, you see Rocco here coming up on some lap traffic with about a lap to go. Yeah, we saw another win for Rocco Landers. This was the battle for third as Dominic Doyle went wheel to wheel, bar to bar with uh, the defending champion. And in the end, uh, behind Rocco Landers, who got the win, and Gus Rodeo, it was Dominic Doyle, Roger, that took another podium position. Yeah, and there's another great ride by, by Dominic being really consistent the last couple of weeks and really cleaning up some mistakes that he had earlier in the year. Now, what does that do to our championship standings? Well, let's have a look as we can see Rocco Landers there on the grid. Great shot there of Rainy Curve, and this is what it does. Rocco Landers, after missing the start of the season, has the slender advantage. One point over Blake Davis, Gus Rodeo in third. It's looking as though it's turning into a three-horse race, but Greg Kramer, with a lot of points still on the table, this one is not over. It absolutely isn't. You know what, we've been talking a lot about the three riders in the front row, but on the inside of the second row is the defending champion who had the points lead coming in here, and Blake Davis, obviously after that last race, you're down one point now sitting in second, but you had a heck of a second half of the season last year to bring the championship home. What are you going to do here to sort of turn things around and repeat? Yeah, just trying to go with the guys at the front, make a few less mistakes, and I think I have the pace to do it. So uh, I like these last few tracks coming up here soon, and... Uh, I think I can go fast. You enjoying riding on this new pavement here? Yeah, it's a lot different, but I'm loving it. It's a ton of fun. All right, that's Blake Davis, folks. Obviously going to be working his way uh, up to the front if he can at all possible. He needs to recoup some of the points. And a guy who continues to impress and look really strong, and frankly, we love the, uh, the graphic scheme on the bike because we can pick it out anywhere, is Jackson Blackman. And Jackson, you've shown some really good pace. Center of the second row, what do you need to get up on the podium today? Yeah, you know, I think our thing the last few races has been the first few laps and the start. So we've been working hard on trying to make sure we get a good line, shot the line today, and just put ourselves in good position. I know we've had pretty good pace this, so far this weekend, so hoping I can get up there and stick it to these guys today. You've had three days now on this new pavement here. What do you think of it? Do you like it? Yeah, it's awesome. You know, it's definitely a little bit different feeling than last time I was here two years ago. Um, but, you know, we've just been getting our K-Tech suspension dialed in on the new pavement and just making constant strides. There's so many iconic corners here, Jackson. Which one is your favorite of all of the great ones here? Oh, man, you know, it's hard to pick one, but, you know, I always feel like this track has a different environment to it, you know, than anywhere else. And, uh, you know, outside of the corkscrew, I feel like that uh, turn six with that dip is, is pretty gnarly. Yeah, I've always thought that's one of the best ones going as well. Good luck today. Have fun. Hope to talk to you later on the podium. Yeah, thank you.
All right, Justin Blackman. And uh, going to come over here now and have a chat with Kayla Yakov. Sorry, I need to jump in here on you. And Kayla, uh, obviously race yesterday, really competitive third, fighting hard, had that little tip off down in, in turn two. Uh, but when we talked to you earlier, you seem to be pretty optimistic about your chances today starting in six. What do you think? Yeah, it's going to be definitely super difficult. Everyone's fighting super hard here this weekend. So, uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to this race. The, the fans here are absolutely amazing. Thank you all for coming out. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to try to put on a good show today. I have a good uh, umbrella boy showing some skin. So, Man, Have a look at the umbrella boy. He's, he's playing the part. I love it. All good. Yeah, ready, ready to rip. Got to ask you something here. Last time you raced here was in Junior Cup. This is a very different bike with the new pavement. Did that affect you more or less with the change making the step up? Um, honestly, it, it didn't make that much of a change. I just really enjoy the track, and I think uh, the new surface is great. And, uh, yeah, I'm just super excited for this race today. I think the bike's in a really good shape right now, and we did uh, we made some really good changes in FP, or I mean, I should say warm-up. Um, but, yeah, I'm ready to ready to rip. All right, and by the way, just in case this guy looks familiar here, that's, that's Owen. He's been running in the uh, super sport class, so uh, a multi-talented individual for sure. We have just a little bit more time. I want to sneak over here real quick and uh, have a, a, a chat with Hayden Schultz. Hayden, you have had some great speed here this weekend, but you've also had some little issues come up. Everything sorted? You ready to get to the front today? Yeah, I think so. It's been a challenging weekend. I know we've got some pace in us. It's just uh, been hard to show it. You know, yesterday we had a crash in qualifying too, and then uh, didn't get a fast lap in. So race one was was challenging. Had an issue there and started from pit lane, so we didn't get to mix it up with these guys. But uh, we show we have some race pace, uh, and I think we've got the bike set up a little bit better today. So uh, Gene and my whole Cycle Tech crew has been working so hard to get us out there, and we've had some bad luck. So I think we're due for a good result. So I'm gonna put my head down and just try to latch onto these guys and mix it up and see if we can't fight for a podium. Well, we know you've got the speed. We know you've got the talent. We look forward to you and maybe I'll be talking to you at the end of the race. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, that was Hayden Schultz, and of course, starting next to him, uh, you're going to have uh, you know an awfully talented few people here, and one of them, Filippo Rivelli, right over here on the Team ESO bike, and uh, acting uh, as a teammate for Dominic Doyle this weekend. Dominic has had great speed. Filippo is wicked quick, coming from Italy, a great teammate to have, giving Dominic as well some extra data. You're getting double the information, and for Dominic, who's been really quick already this year, putting up some tremendous numbers having a rider as quick as Filippo available for the team is going to possibly make an even bigger difference can't wait to see what unfolds and this is Revit Twins Cup race two coming up here and with that going to send it back up to Roger and Michael Hill for the call yeah, thanks, Craig, and uh, always uh, great to be down there on the grid. And, uh, Roger, you've been down there as a rider. What's going through these guys' and girls' minds right now? Well, I mean, the, the big thing right now, you just hope you get the bike set up. If you made a lot of changes from the yesterday's race or this morning's warm-up, you're just hoping that uh, they're the, the right way. And, and when you're at this point, you're just – you're just really focused on that start. I mean, you know a start can make or break your race. And, you know, if you get a bad start and get shuffled back and then you can't make your way toward the front. So right now you're just hoping to get a really good start and trying to, try to focus on that light as much as possible. There is the man of the moment, the new championship leader by one point, Rocco Landers. And as uh, Roger's already alluded to, he may have looked like it was an easy win, but Gus Rodeo for sure has the pace, just nine one thousandths of a second between their fastest laps. If Rodeo can get off the line with Rocco Landers and just avoid sort of any melee on that first lap, we could see a bit of a scrap here. Yeah, and Gus lost a lot of time in yesterday's race with that little get together with, with Blake and with Blake Davis into the corkscrew. And uh, those two both ran a little bit wide, and that gave Rocco about a second and a half, two-second lead right away. And uh, Gus was able to match his lap times through, throughout the race toward the end. I think Gus realized he didn't have the pace to make those two seconds up and wasn't going to throw it down the road trying to make it up. Revit Twins Cup coverage is brought to you by Revit Apparel, design, innovation, and performance. And by... Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series.
The warm-up lap then for the Revit Twins Cup race uh, series uh, here. It is a great addition to the Moto America Championship. We are here at one of the most iconic circuits, not just in Moto America, but in the world, Roger. Yeah, and a really fun track too, and a lot of elevation. Turn one is a lot quicker than it looks like down into turn two, which is a really tricky corner. You know, pushes you down in there in three and four, flows really well, then turn five. From there, the track starts growing uphill through six, up to the corkscrew, and then the big drop down the rainy curve, and then turn 10, one of my favorite corners. A track with a lot of camber, you can get in there deep, and then turn 11, really hard braking. We've seen a lot of passes and a lot of races change this weekend in that turn 11. Yeah, as you can see from the graphic, this circuit was built and constructed in 1957, and we've seen some iconic races. This is the starting grid for race two, and I wonder, Roger, whether we're going to see another iconic race today. Landers Rodeo and Dominic Doyle, your podium from yesterday, start on the front row of the grid. Kelly Arkoff starts in sixth. Brendan Kettleson, uh, Brendan, doing a good job to get inside the top six yesterday. He uh, will start ninth. Hayden Schultz, though, Roger, with a little bit of work to do, as he said, on the grid. Yeah, a little work to do, not starting where he, he would like to start, and yesterday's race starting in the back, at least today, he's on that third row. And if he can get a really good start, make up some positions early and uh, latch on early and uh, you know we all know he's got the pace he's always he's a racer he always steps up and the lights go out he does indeed a big grid here often uh, one of the largest uh, entered fields that we have in moto america two races per round look at the grid look at the uh, stacked grid that we have here 13 laps ahead of us aprilia aprilia yamaha who's going to get the whole shot the lights are on they're out and away we go and it's a great start. It certainly looked like a great start from Gus Rodeo and it's going to be Rodeo that leads. But once again, Blake Davis, Roger, with a cracking start from the second row. Yeah, Blake got a good start as well, but I think Gus is going to lead him down into turn two and, and Blake filters in second. Kayla Yakov, good start up to fourth. Yeah, oh, she uh, becomes uh, the meat in the ISO sandwich there as Ravelli goes one side and Dominic Dole goes the other and uh, looks as though she's lost a couple of positions. Hayden Schultz has made a pretty good start as well. Jackson Black. Uh, Jackson Blackman, sorry, also there. But look at the start from Rodeo. How many times this year have we said if he can just get away at the front, he's going to be able to go with uh, with Landers when Landers makes his way forward? Yeah, and you see Rocco now. He's trying to make a pass on Blake pretty early, a little bit wide there. And as these two are kind of going back and forth, you can see Gus just slowly chipping away, and, and Rocco now is going to make a move, I believe, into turn six. That's a hard place to pass, but Rocco gets it done. Oh! and Rodeo. Rodeo, after a brilliant start, gets it completely wrong on the exit. And of course, he won't have realized that he had about a 10 bike length lead. And uh, all that hard work goes out of the window at turn six. Yeah, and he was just doing what he was supposed to do early in the race, pushing hard, had the lead and going to try to make the break. But luckily for him, he recovered really quickly and got his head back down and uh, lost a little time, but he's still in the fight. Yeah, he's a lot closer to the front at the end of the first lap than he was yesterday. And uh, he's going to have shown that he's got the pace. He's already looking at the inside of Blake Davis. Davis as well, with a much stronger opening lap than uh, 24 hours ago. And I think all these guys kind of know what Rocco's plan is. Get in the lead and get in his rhythm. He's really good at clicking off those laps. Rocco is when, it, when he's out in the lead and he doesn't make a lot of mistakes. And you can see all these guys are trying to tuck in behind him as we see Gus makes the pass down into turn two. Yeah, seems to hold it a lot tighter uh, there as well. Carries the corner spin, and this is a much more aggressive opening couple of laps then from the uh, early championship leader, of course, uh, Gus Rodeo, the winner of the opening round of the championship, and he's been steadily there or thereabouts. And I tell you what, he has got the hooks into the back of Rocco Landers here. There's no team orders. I spoke to Kevin Rodeo, the team owner and team principal. These guys are free to fight. Yeah, and that's the way it should be so early in the season. I'm sure, you know, the number one rule is, is don't knock your teammate down, but they're going to fight it out, and they're they're going for a title. Yes, yeah, seven points between the top three riders in the championship, and they are the top three riders on our screen in a slightly different order, but uh, nevertheless, as they come up through turn six, hard on the brakes again. You really can't see where you're going here, can you? No, and it's a little bit easier. You can see how Gus makes up a little time on the brakes. It's a little easier going into the corkscrew when you're behind somebody because you can kind of judge their speed off yours. 
Again, just looking at the different lines, looking as though Rocco's maybe a little bit more defensive. Rodeo carrying a lot of corner speed. He looks very, very confident. This is great to see. He kind of had that mid-season dip through no fault of his own where he was involved in other people's incidents. But uh, he's got that self-belief, and you've got to have self-belief. Yeah, he has it, and he should. This season, he's made a huge step and been one of the most consistent guys. And, and coming into today's race, I mean, he's looking he's looking racy. I think yesterday he felt like he had the pace to, to run with Rocco if things didn't happen on that first lap. And today, he wants to show it. 29-9 from Gus Rodeo. That is inside the old lap record. Both of the top two inside the old lap record. There was a new lap record set yesterday at 27, uh, sorry, 29.7. A tenth off on the second flying lap. That's incredible. Yeah, and, and you can see Gus. It's kind of weird watching Rocco and Gus. They both got like two two different lines. Rocco's a little bit more of a, a sweepy line, and, and Gus gets these really good runs out of the corner. Yeah, again, a big, long look over the shoulder from uh, Landers. He didn't have to look very far, Roger. No, not at all, and Gus is right there, and these two are just slowly chipping away from, from Blake Davis and the rest of the group. Yeah, the rest of the group then just uh, still in the same uh, picture momentarily. There you see there's a nice little four rider fight now. Uh, what are they, uh, one and a half seconds or so now behind this leading duo. Blake Davis currently in third. Filippo Ravelli who went down. That's a great aerial shot. That's where Ravelli got it wrong yesterday. Dominic Doyle also in that mix and down the hill again. And once again at this part of the circuit, we're able to see that Rodeo is able to close in. There is Blake Davis. Then it's the two ISO bikes. I tell you what, he may have gone down yesterday, but an impressive Moto America debut for Filippo Ravelli. No, I mean, yesterday was fighting for the podium, and today he's got himself right there in, in fourth. He's kind of closing that gap down to Blake a little bit and doing a good job keeping his teammate behind him, Dominic Doyle. Over the line we go, 29-6 from Rocco Landers. That's a new lap record, 29-5 from Gus Rodeo. They are pushing each other at the front and another new circuit record as Davis goes deep, deep, deep into turn two. He's gonna go wide. Is Ravelli close enough? Not this time, Roger. But we're starting to get a two-way rider fight at the front and it's shaping up to be another duo behind as Davis and Ravelli look to have just stretched a couple of bike lengths advantage over Doyle, who himself is in a two-rider fight with Kayla Yakov. But that last lap, Dominic was able to close, you know, three tenths up on Blake. So he's definitely, if, if Ravelli cannot make that pass sooner and Blake's holding him up, Dominic's going to be able to close up that little bit of a gap. Yeah, and just interesting again watching these two riders, same machines, they're able to share data. Don't always run the, the same setup, which is normal for teammates, obviously, but just seems to me that Rocco's a little bit quicker, sector one, sector two, and then obviously uh, Rodeo is quick towards the uh, the second part of the lap. Ravelli just looks quick everywhere, doesn't he? He's all over the back of a sliding uh, Blake Davis. Great bike control from the number one. Yeah, and, and also Ravelli, he's really good on the brakes. You notice that, you know, he always closes up a lot on the brakes, but sometimes it can be too much and he loses a little more on the exit. Yeah, Davis using a lot wider line there. And again, maybe you, you touched on this yesterday, Ravelli still has only done about 40 laps around this place. He doesn't really know where he's going. And also, too, learning the, to the ride the Twins Cup bike is going to be a little bit different than some stuff that he's used to. Yeah, he said uh, when I spoke to him, I know him obviously from uh, uh, the racing he's done in Europe, and he said, yeah, the, the guys here, just they just ride a little bit differently. Uh, they maybe uh, attack more quickly than they would in Europe. And uh, again, that's what he's got to get used to. This is racing in America. You, everyone races uh, differently. Every series is different. And this is Twins Cup where uh, it's every man or woman for himself and still at the front Gus Rodeo is locked onto the back of Landers and I don't think Landers would have expected this. No but Rocco looks back and every time he looks back he sees the 96 is right there and Rocco looks back here every lap out of turn four and, and he sees Gus is not letting him go. Do you think, oh, again, he's a little bit loose into uh, turn five. He's pushing. I mean, he's definitely under pressure, and we've not really seen him under this much pressure. No, and but, you know, we've seen Rocco win a lot of races at the front, and this time he's got somebody breathing down his neck. Cause Rocco's really good from where, where Gus made that mistake on the first lap in turn six. It kind of looks like he's a little bit slow through there, not wanting to repeat that mistake, and you can see the gap. Rocco was able to pull out. Yeah, it looks like an, a small mistake from uh, Rodeo. I don't know whether he ran in just a little bit hot, but you could see definitely the, the exit speed from Landers. And you've talked about this so much uh, this weekend, haven't you? The, the, the speed through six determines your speed up the hill, which ultimately results in, in a quick or a slow lap time. And, and through there, you run a little bit wide, then you kill your drive all the way up through the corkscrew. And it's really difficult when you're trying to hang on to somebody. Going up through that turn six, you want to make up time, 
but then you get in there too fast and you kill your exit going up to the corkscrew. Yeah, across the line goes Landers, across the line goes Rodeo. The gap now goes up to 0.9 of a second. Yeah, Rodeo lost half a second. Now that we're going to see what Rodeo's got. We know in a race he's uh, typically quick in the last uh, quarter of the race. He's been able to hang with Rocco Landers. Remember yesterday, Roger, by this point in the race, the gap was already 2.5 seconds as it's all starting to shape up quite nicely behind for a little one, two, three, four rider fight for the final podium spot. Uh, Davis, the championship uh, leader early on, the defending champion, Ravelli, never been on the podium. Dominic Doyle on the podium yesterday and Kelly Yakov, who continues to make history uh, as one of the fastest females ever to come out of the US. Yeah, and Kayla's doing a good job kind of closing this group back down there for a couple laps. She she fell back a couple tenths, and now this that that four rider quartet starting to starting to really close up as this race moves on. Yeah, yesterday, uh, by this point, as I said, Landers was uh, clear and gone, and uh, not the case today. But uh, Kayla Yakov now on the back of this group, and she'll be learning a lot from these three. She's uh, the she's going to be able to watch where they're going. And for Davis, that's difficult, isn't it? Because he's leading the group, and he's kind of the benchmark for everybody else. And all these guys are behind Blake now can see where they're faster than him, where yeah. he's weak at, and they're able to, to kind of study his lines. But, you know, Blake's got that number one plate on his bike for a reason. He's a really good, talented rider and doesn't make a lot of mistakes. And like, he's kind of used to doing this, having pressure down his back and, and not making a mistake. Just behind these, we see Hayden Schultz and Jackson Blackman. Just momentary, we saw them in that uh, shot over. 29-4 from Gus Rodeo. We wondered whether he's got an answer. And Roger Hayden, the answer is yes. 29.412, well over a second quicker than the previous lap record that was broken yesterday. And that gap that had gone up to a second is now back down to 0.4. We have a race, and it's between two teammates. I remind you, there are no team orders at the Rodeo Racing, powered by Robum Engineering. Team manager, team principal, all the mechanics, they are going to be biting their fingernails as this race continues with still seven laps remaining. Yeah, seven laps to go with this battle still heating up for that final podium spot. You can see how close Felipe, watch him on the brakes right here. He is really strong on the brakes. Takes a look but realizes he's not close enough. And Kayla Yakov also uh, good on the brakes. I think she was looking on the inside of Dominic Dolce. She did. She, gone, she went through. So uh, whilst we were looking at Ravelli, and rightly so, Kayla Yakov thinking, right, now let's make the move. And she's now up to fifth. And that's an impressive pass by Kayla because yesterday that's where she had her crash. Yes. And you can see how quick she put that behind her today and was able to make the pass in turn five. Yeah, that's a valid point. As again, Blake Davis sideways into the corkscrew. Small mistake there from Ravelli. Goes in a bit deep. And Yakov now all over the back of Filippo Ravelli down through rainy curve again Blake goes so wide I always think he's going to run out of the circuit but he does it every lap yeah really wide and we've talked a lot too about this weekend you know the, the track being a little greasy offline being brand new pavement so he's got to be careful a lot of front end chatter there from the Yamaha and uh, Blake Davis now has got a lot of company and the company is coming in the form firstly from Filippo Ravelli as across the line now goes Rocco Landers, a 4-29-4 again. So both of them on lap record place. There's the two leaders. Then we pan back. It's a nine-second gap. Back to this enthralling quartet. Davis, Ravelli, Yakov. Don't discount Dominic Doyle. And Filippo Ravelli, he's going to see his pit board said plus 0.5. And when he comes around this time, plus 0 0.0. So he's going to start getting a little impatient with Blake. We see him take a look. Last lap headed into turn five. And I bet this lap he takes another look. Yeah, and Ravelli, uh, again, he won't mind me saying, has uh, been a little bit hot-headed in his career. And here he goes, he lets off the brakes, and he goes in deep. And I was wondering whether he was going to make that stick. Uh, he did make it stick, and that was a nice pass, but he always just looks a little bit erratic, a little bit out of shape. He's not, that's just his style. Yeah, and we've seen him take that look the lap before, and at the, in that time he just really committed. He makes a mistake through turn six and gets a really bad run. I was telling you, you make a mistake in six, it's costly, headed up to the corkscrew. Yeah, Kelly Yakov also thought about making the move, and Dominic Doyle is just sat there rubbing his hands, just thinking, come on, boys and girls, you crack on, and I'll just pick up the pieces. While at the front, off camera, uh, Rodeo is on another sensation a lap here is again that wide line from Blake Davis four Yamahas there's going to be three disappointed riders at the end of this uh, Roger and all of them deserve the podium they're all riding superbly 29-2 from Gus Rodeo Oh, the pace that we are seeing at the front is impressive. The pace from these four is equally impressive. They're also under the old, old lap record as again Ravelli now looks on the inside Yamaha versus Yamaha different teams but nothing between them here we go on the brakes again and he goes in deep. Davis then now loses that spot. Yakov 
is there in fifth position. The first female to win in the Junior Cup last year. She's already been the first female to be on the podium. Could she make it another podium? I tell you what, she's got every chance, Roger. She's looking very, very good. And as you said, already making some big moves at a corner that took her uh, out of the race yesterday. Yeah, and she knows she's going to get by Blake pretty quick because she's going to see Ravelli in the front now and going to try to pull away. And he looks like he had more pace, but did he have the pace to break away from Blake or did he have the pace just to hang on to Blake? And we're going to find that out now that he's made the pass. Yeah, we've seen a couple of Italians, Eduardo Mazzuoli last year coming out here to ride. Uh, also previously, Tommaso Marcon, uh, who had a pole position in the front row. I don't think Tommaso got on the podium. I may be uh, mistaken. He was certainly fighting for the podium, but we could see a little bit of history. Oh, Blake again was thinking about making the move. I was going to say we may see a little bit of history. The Italians like this championship and they like riding at Laguna. Down through rainy curve and... Davis, it's hard to believe, I, I keep saying it in pretty much every commentary, but he rides with so much maturity. Across the line go the two leaders, and that gap still about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 of a second. It's not over, but Landers just starting to stretch the Atlantic, uh, sorry, the Atlantic, the Elastic uh, now. Well, they're just kind of yo-yoing now. Couple, one lap, Rockles a couple tenths quicker. Then Gus makes it up. And then the next lap, Rockles able to, to pull it out a little bit. And I'm sure Gus Rodeo trying to close that gap. He probably put a lot of stress on those tires doing low 29s. Yeah, we saw Ravelli going a little bit wide. And unfortunately, Christian Marionian, uh, who uh, was having a good run yesterday, got his best result of the season. He goes down, crashes out of 17th. He was on another good ride there, uh, Roger. He was doing well while at the front. Still Landers from Rodeo. And now they seem to have dropped Dominic Doyle, which is a bit of a surprise as Davis is going to replay the compliment. Oh, they're almost touching. Davis thought about letting off the brakes, dress rehearsal possibly. I think for the next lap, you know, he kind of got a good run through turn four. And this is another place where Blake gets a really good run out of turn six up toward the corkscrew. The lap before, he had to look on the inside and he might be there this time. Around the outside, though, is going to be, uh, that's going to be a hard pass. Yeah, it's going to be a hard pass. Oh, they almost touch. And Ravelli tries to hang out. Blake Davis has the, uh, the sense there just not to bang fairings. And again, Kelly Yakov is there, just keeping a watching brief. Down the hill we go. Again, the difference of lines between the 27 and the 1. Great uh, curbside camera. And all of this fighting is going to allow Dominic Doyle to come back into the fight as Davis now again thinks about looking on the inside, but there's no way through. And I think Ravelli goes a little bit wide, does he? No, he manages somehow to make the apex. Cross the line we go with three to go. Rovelli's really good on the brakes. You know, it's gonna be, it's gonna have to be a, a really aggressive pass, I believe, for Blake to make it by, just because Rovelli, his strong suit looks like it is on the brakes. He's good on the brakes. He kind of kills his drive a little bit on the exit. And I think that's why you see Blake able to get those good runs on him. A little bit of frustration coming in there for Gus Rodeo as the leaders now start to catch the uh, back markers and the slower traffic, and uh, Rodeo just waving his arm. And of course, uh, that's part of racing. You've got to negotiate the slower traffic. They're out there doing their own race, and another. The rider goes down. Is, is that, that Landers? Was that Landers? They see the yellow helmet. It's one it of the Roban. And it is. I think it is. Rocco Landers, the championship leader and the race leader under pressure from Gus Rodeo has thrown it away. And the pressure from Rodeo has now come to fruition. And unfortunately, we see a mistake. And we don't often see that. And now it is looking like a runaway race win, barring a mistake from Rodeo. That is unbelievable. A rare mistake from Rocco Landers who made his way through the traffic like a knife through butter. He wasn't under any pressure, just yeah. lost the front. Yeah, it doesn't really look like anybody, somebody in the previous lap before, it looks like they were down and, you know, Gus keeping that pressure on, you know, and, and Rocco was having to run that really fast pace and, and made a mistake. And now Ravelli is looking at 20 points. Davis is looking at 16. And Kayla Yakov is now absolutely back in the fight. And there is, uh, the 532 of Carl Price, who is actually also the uh, senior medical officer for Moto America. And he's out there uh, having a ride. And uh, unfortunately, that Aprilia of Rocco Landers is going nowhere. He is out of this race and he will lose the championship lead. And uh, with only seven points in it, 25 20, it will be Gus Rodeo, if it stays like this, that will retake the lead in the championship. What a turnaround. And, and Gus seeing Rocco go down, seeing Rocco Landers go down, and now he knows he has a 16 second lead. That as he goes through this lap traffic, you can see him taking his time, making sure he doesn't get in with the, with the lapper and just kind of manage these last couple of laps and keep it clean. Yeah, look what it does to the championship. 
it uh, gives the point swing back to Rodi and we talk about the pendulum how many times in the last two or three years have we <laughs> talked about the pendulum swing in Twins Cup and it's no different in 2023 Davis of course now will absolutely have also seen that Rodeo uh, sorry that uh, Landers is down and he'll know that if he can salvage four points from Ravelli he will retake the lead by a point as well I mean it's all to play for this is why we love Twins Cup racing it's non-stop excitement and thankfully we saw that uh, uh, Landers was on his feet the main thing is he's okay and he's still in the championship fight but oh what a swing we've had about four or five different championship leaders this year and we're going to have only a couple of uh, points between them as we head to the next round the white flag then roger and as you said a 16 second lead barring some kind of mistake or mechanical issue rodeo is going to win again yeah and these two guys have uh, Ravelli and blake davis have kind of pulled away from kayla a little bit i don't know if it's a lap traffic that she struggled to get by but it looks like those two are in that last battle for second and third yeah, Filippo Ravelli, I believe I'm right in uh, saying, will be the highest placed Italian, the highest placed European to ever finish on the podium in a Revit twi oh, Maybe I'll just shut up. It's, it's got to get it to we, the end. We talk about it being slick offline. You see how traction is minimal when you get off that little wide at the apex. Yeah, and of course, uh, he will want to prove a point. He'd like to stay in this championship. I spoke to him during Mike on the mic. I saw him on the grid as well. He said he loves the atmosphere. He thinks it's a great series. He's loving riding uh, with these other riders and it would be great to see him here as a permanent fixture and he's backing it in again his style don't be alarmed that's just how he rides he was even riding the little 400s like this in the world championship he does sometimes get a little bit over excited oh and blake davis tries to go through on the inside there's not much room davis hasn't given up on second place here no but that that lapper with blake just killed his drive i think he was trying to get close enough where he's looked on the inside of him going into this court and he wasn't able to be close enough and rovella you can see how hard he's pushing trying to keep that second place into the final corner to retake the championship lead gus rodeo the winner of the opening round of the championship wins race two at the weather tech race way Laguna Seca and he retakes the championship lead with it the team are delighted and there is Blake Davis looking on the inside he got a great run through the final couple of quarters but Ravelli is surely Roger gonna make history and be on the podium we have a European on the top uh, of the sorry, the middle of the podium Ravelli takes second Blake Davis wheel to wheel takes third and Davis absolutely too is back in the championship and Ravelli made a mistake yesterday he said i am not going to make a mistake today there were some pretty exciting wild passes but a thoroughly well deserved second place for Filippo ravelli uh, and blake good ride by him he didn't give up he fought for it every last uh, even to the flag ravelli slid a little bit on that exit 11 and, and uh, blake got a good run it wasn't close enough but look Gus at rodeo you can't say enough about it. look at his race pace there one two on three four five six lap records Wow. We're all um, in a row and uh, keeping that pressure on Rocco. And, and that's what happens. And, wow. you know, Rocco probably wouldn't have made that mistake if he was pulling away a couple tenths a lap. But Rocco yep. or Gus was keeping him honest and was trying to keep that gap and, and made a little mistake. Yeah, and there is a very dejected. I was going to say that's Rocco, but I think that was maybe the other rider that went down. But a very dejected rider on the side and a huge celebration. Stand up wheelie for uh, Gus Rodeo. And uh, again, mind games come into it. They are friends off track, but pulling a wheelie like that and uh, going past uh, Rocco, uh, the mind game, it's part of racing. It's part of racing, isn't it? I think he's just celebrating the win. He's happy winning at Laguna is like no other feeling. Revit Twins Cup coverage is brought to you by Revit Apparel, design, innovation, and performance. And by Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. Great aerial shots then of the uh, circuit and uh, what, a, what a race that was. Uh, as you said, as uh, here comes Gus Rodeo, Roger down into Park Ferme. That will be, I mean, any win is a satisfying win, I can imagine it is, but uh, that will be even more satisfying probably than the win at Daytona for Gus Rodeo because he absolutely earned that. As you said, he was putting so much pressure on Rocco Landers, and in the end, it was Rocco that made the mistake, and there was no mistake from Gus. And I, I mentioned this the other day in practice and qualifying to you that Gus has been one of the most impressive riders this season, one that's made the biggest jump 
for, you know, this year, and you see him celebrating there, and he should be, he should be happy. You know, I mean, a ride like that, one of those that probably, the, you know, one of his best ones ever, and he's just real great this year, and he's made a huge step, and he's been so consistent all year. It doesn't look like it on, on paper when you go back and look at Barber, but those were out of his. You know, it wasn't really his uh, control, but besides that, he's been on the podium pretty much every single race in the battle, you know, for the win or the podium. Yeah, he absolutely has. And uh, as I said, one of the standouts of the season, a rider moving up from the Junior Cup, and you can see him embracing the team. He goes over to his mom, his grandma there. And this is a proper family team, isn't it? It's a family team. I saw Anthony Maziato down there who rode for this team last year. He's down there celebrating. And I love to see this, the emotion. He's a rider that wears his wears his heart on his, on his sleeve. And when things went wrong for him, he was you know really down in the dumps, and you can understand that. But uh, he's picked himself up, and he hasn't lost that self-belief. And a win by almost 17 seconds. I mean, that is impressive. That's a, that's a lot. And he's slowed down the last couple laps. Yeah, Filippo Rovelli becomes the highest placed European to ever finish on a Revit Twins Cup podium in second place. Blake Davis in third. Kelly Yakov, Dominic Dole, Jackson Blackman in the top six. Jolie Mandry Jr. salvages a top ten after the disappointment of yesterday. More po more points for uh, Jacob Crossman. What about that? Uh, the fastest uh, plastic surgeon on two wheels, Carl Price, the medical doctor for Moto America, scores a championship point in 15th. There is uh, Gus Rodeo and Greg, you're down there with, I'm sure, the happiest man in Park Fermi. I am, I am indeed, and they're going to sneak in on him here, Gus. Uh, absolutely incredible ride. Uh, in this one, obviously, Rocco got out to the front, but you just kept heaping pressure on, heaping pressure on. Every time you put a lap in, you'd put one in a little bit quicker. Probably the best ride we've uh, we've seen from you. So quick it hounded Rocco into a little error out there. Uh, you got to be mighty pleased with this one. No, I don't, I don't think I pressured Rocco into an error. I think there was a lot going on in that corner, and he made a simple mistake. Um, that's not how I wanted to get uh, my first win since Daytona Beach, but um, it's points. We'll take it. I hope Rocco's all right. I mean, he was just putting it down, and I was just trying to match his times and, and keep the pressure on. But when it all comes down to it, that's my teammate, and uh, it's my boy. So uh, I don't want to see him go down, and that sucks. But uh, we got the points. I don't know where that puts us in the championship. but You're in the lead, man. We're in the lead, yeah. So we're back in the lead, which is great. And um, I'm going to mark uh, Laguna Seca on my list as uh, my favorite track. So uh, i got to thank the whole team, everybody watching back home. Thank you, guys. Um, HJC, Moto Liberty, RS Tai Chi, everybody. Uh, Hi, Dennis, Luxar VIP, Geoscape Solar, NJ Mini GP. I appreciate all you guys. And uh, on to the East Coast. Seventh podium, but more importantly, second win on the season. Well done. Thank you. How about it, folks? A little noise for your winner, Gus Rodeo. Let's come on around here to Filippo Rivelli. And uh, absolutely, first of all, welcome to North America. Welcome to Laguna Seca. What a ride you put in today. At the end, Blake Davis, you guys were in one heck of a battle. Great race. Yeah, it was a really good race. I had uh, fun. And adds, uh, I did uh, some mistakes, but uh, at, the, uh, what the, at the last lap, I did a mistake in, at the second corner, but I did uh, a very good race. I want to dedicate uh, this race to my uncle Marco. Well, you came over. All right, congratulations. Well done, my friend. Welcome to the United States. We love having you here. How about it, Filippo Ravalli? And the relentless one in terms of getting points, going for the, uh, uh, the uh, win here. You end up now uh, a third in the points, I think, but fifth podium. And man, you were after Filippo at the end of that. You guys were in a great race. So close so many times, Blake. Yes, he was running a really clean race. Uh, I made a few mistakes near the end. I feel like I, uh, I had the pace to, you know, get second but I just kept making mistakes he was running a pretty clean race so uh, props to him I'd just like to thank my team into bobblehead moto uh, STM the clutches have been amazing uh, just everyone that's helped me out KYT Dineasy uh, SBS Pews easy grip just all my sponsors they've been a huge help to me this season and I would like to say happy birthday to my Nana she had her birthday a few days ago so uh, we're praying for you uh, just hope everything is good 
Oh, no, absolutely. I, I do want to ask you one thing, especially the last third of the race, up into the corkscrew on the entry, you were hanging the back out so much. Was that just to get it rotated or was it just you were pushing so hard it was just skipping out on you? Yeah, it was helping with my line a lot, but uh, also it just felt really comfortable. I felt like I could get over to the right side of the track enough to get the right route the right line I needed, so uh, no, I just felt comfortable having a little bit of fun out there, so <laughs> it was good. All right, Blake, always a, always a treat to watch you ride, man. Thank you. How about it, folks? Uh, getting a podium for Nana. You got to love that. Guys? Thanks, Greg. Uh, great stuff. Uh, let's have a look at the highlights, and you got to say all three of these riders are credit to themselves, their teams, and to Moto America. Some great interviews there. Yeah, great interviews and some uh, really special races for some guys. Yeah, I just love the emotion uh, from all of them down there. Absolutely brilliant. Here's a replay then of what happened. It was Rodeo that got the whole shot uh, from a very fast starting Blake Davis. Rocco Landers made light work of Davis, and then Rodeo ran off the track. Yeah, Rodeo makes a mistake, but you can see jumps right back in behind the top two guys, and at this point, you can see Gus making a move again on, on second corner there, trying to hunt down his teammate. Over the line, it became a four-way Yamaha fight as Ravelli locked horns with Davis, Yakov in the mix, and Dominic Doyle wasn't done either. Yeah, these two I thought was battling for the last podium spot. You can see Blake making a move here, going over turn one. What a tight pass, but a good one, but runs a little bit wide. Yeah, Ravelli, remember, only in his first ever weekend of Moto America racing. And then this was the pivotal moment. The two leaders breaking lap records. Landers desperate to get back on the bike. He surrenders the lead and ultimately would throw away the win, which went to this guy as he powered his way to a win by almost 17 seconds, Roger. Yeah, great ride by Gus, keeping the pressure on, not making a mistake, and uh, from there, the, the battles were still going on through the field. And I tell you what, he can certainly pull a wheelie, can't he? That is impressive as well. Uh, really impressive, and he's just been impressive all, all year, and, yeah. and uh, he really earned that win. Of course, he doesn't want to win with Rocco crashing, but uh, he rode a, you know, an incredible race, and he should be really proud of that. Yeah, absolutely. There are the top three, and I think all three of them very, very popular. You could hear the cheer from the crowds, couldn't you, as they were introduced there. Here's a look at what it does to the championship. It is still looking like a three-rider fight with Rodeo now back in the lead. Three points. Landers not out of it with 18. Hayden Schultz, Dominic Doyle, Yakov moves up to seventh, and Joe Lamandre Jr. is steadily picking up the points. He's in eighth. Yeah, and then Chris Parrish still in the, the top nine there. Good for him. And, you know, we see the 18 points there. I mean, with how competitive it is in, in Junior Cup, or not Junior Cup, but the Twins Cup, yep. you know, we see guys first one week, six in the other. You can make up a lot of points in one weekend. Yeah, 50 points per weekend, remember, 25 for the win in each race. Here's a look at uh, the rest of their schedule. There's still, Roger, 100 points available. Two races at Pit Race, two races at New Jersey. So all still to play for. Yeah, and, and for Rocco, he's, he's 18 points back. They play, if, he gets, if he wins and Gus gets second, that's five points a race there'll be 20 points if he wins the next four it's going to come down to the final round isn't it great cannot wait to get your tickets for pittsburgh and new jersey there's more to come on live plus we've got more racing stay with us